and now look to Dr. Carol Lynn Cucho to continue the case for the opposition. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> I would like to thank this audience for coming tonight. I'd like to thank my fellow debate participants and other distinguished guests for attending. I'd like to thank all of our hosts here at the Oxford Union for inviting us to take part in this wonderful scholarly tradition. My graduate education was funded by US tax dollars. In such, that makes me a public commodity, a public service, my intellect, my skill, and my ability to perform thought leadership on an international stage, a public service much like electricity or water. <clears throat> I work as an embryologist directly in the industry that would be tasked with implementing such a technology. So for me, this is not an esoteric debate topic. This is my profession. And it has been the honor and privilege of my life to work in the fields of science and medicine that directly impact the human spirit and human dignity. From the Tower of Babel to the wings that Icarus fashioned out of wax, Frankenstein's monster, Jurassic Park, Starstruck, and Gattaca, we love to frighten ourselves with tales of man's hubris in the face of nature. However, our collective stories are also filled with the heroes of engineering, James Bond, Iron Man, Batman. Perhaps we mythologize these men, not only for their prowess in engineering, but maybe some of their social and biological engineering as well. But the drive to invent, to build, create, modify, and harness the natural world is part of what makes us human. Engineering, perhaps more so, than the acquisition of language even, allowed us, scrawny and hairless apes, to walk on hind limbs cloaked in the hides of the ruminants we domesticated through the Ice Age. Engineering of the natural world to suit our needs, wants, and desires is what makes our subspecies, Homo sapiens sapiens, the thinking man. Certainly, we see the foundation of the discipline of genetic engineering from the time of our earliest human prehistory, as we pressured the genomes of our canine companions, pressured the genomes of the great grasses, wheat and corn, to become the staple crops we know today. And we see it reflected still in the husbandry that gives us our flocks of cattle instead of us being in the woods hunting aurochs. We live in a time when we can precisely edit DNA, some believe edit the essence of humanity, as easily as a Word document. And with this great power comes great responsibility. But what is the nature of humanity? I suspect that if you asked 1,000 different people, you would get 1,000 different answers. And it is difficult to distill a guiding moral principle from a place where we don't even have a good definition of, of what the word means. But consider, if you will, some traits of our better human nature, creativity, intelligence, perseverance, determination, even empathy. All of our disciplines, theology, philosophy, music, art, science, serve to help us structure and achieve these triumphs of human spirit.
But these traits can be no more defined by our genes than human consciousness itself can be. The nature of humanity is not controlled by genes, but rather gained through social, tribal interaction <clears throat> and the transmission of human culture. The traits I mentioned, by the way, these are our ideals, our better human nature. The nature of humanity also encompasses genocide, terrorism, war, environmental destruction, and disease. A simple truth of the nature of humanity is that in the 1800s, 43% of children died before their fifth birthday. So even if genetic engineering is said to undermine some portion of the nature of our humanity, then I ask, why do we want to stop that? It has taken us roughly 2,000 years to get humanity to a place where we are so healthy and living so long that we have forgotten it was science and medicine that got us here. Millions of people in the developed world have regressed to a sort of pre-enlightenment magical thinking, placing their health in the hands of anti-vaxxers, chiropractors, herbalists, and various snake oil salesmen. For those of us who have been trained in the ethical ways to perform medical science, it is incumbent on us to personally carry forth the work of making this world a better place, not just for my daughter, but for all of your children and for the future generations. We will look on this current historical moment with all of its fear and distrust of chemicals and science and medicine as we do the dark ages. You might choose to define human nature by a set of foundational principles that our two great countries share. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, the principles that John Locke and Thomas Jefferson spoke of. When we aspire to these principles, we are not aspiring to the bare minimum of survival. We are talking about having a good life, a happy, healthy life, free from disease, and certainly genetic engineering can help us achieve all three of these principles. I would even go so far as to argue that genetic engineering should not be limited to curing a defined set of diseases set aside by some moral body, but that it could be applied without reproach even to frivolous causes. Is there any reason to infringe the freedom of consenting adults to do what they want with their own genomes? Let's think about DNA. It is an example of our folly to think it is somehow special. We share 98% of our DNA with chimpanzees and over 50% with chickens and bananas. <laughs> Some regions of our genome are even ultra-conserved. Not a single letter is different from primitive bacteria. All of us alive today share one unbroken genetic lineage throughout time to our single cell ancestors from billions of years ago? And is there some specific immutable property to the DNA we possess? No. Our DNA mutates in response to the sun, our environment, from the simple act of replicating itself. If you have ever had a cold, the flu, chicken pox, then your genome has been modified by the viral syringe that injected DNA into your cells to be replicated. And if you have ever been pregnant, undoubtedly the signature of the DNA of the child you carried can now be found throughout your body, even in your brain. A static, unchanging genome is not part of human nature. So in conclusion, Thank you for the minute marker. It is abundantly clear that the nature of humanity is hard to define. We are more 
than the sum of our parts. We are more, even, than our genes. We are more than an arrangement of single nucleotides. We are not a static and unchanging genome. There isn't even anything particularly special or unique about our DNA sequence. And I feel confident that you cannot undermine the nature of humanity by the simple act of genetic engineering.